Good afternoon, Chicago land, and welcome to another edition of the Green Radio Network. Here on the Green Radio Network, we'll bring you a variety of green topics and the latest information on green technology and transportation. This program features environmental leaders throughout northern Indiana and the entire nation. The Green Radio Network is sponsored by NERPC, the Northwestern Indiana Regional Planning Commission, and the award-winning South Shore Clean Cities. Both entities are leaders in the environmental industry and work together to bring cleaner air and more sustainable living to northern Indiana. Now to introduce Carl Lissick, Executive Director of South Shore Clean Cities and the host of the show. Well, thank you for that introduction, and today our guests on the Green Radio Network are Mr. Steve Sheckle, he's the Chief of Police in Munster, Indiana, and Mr. Ray Chambers from the Newton County Emergency Management Agency. Both are part of the Northwest Indiana Sharing and Security Alliance, or NISA. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. So, how did NISA start? Let's talk about NISA, and uh, how did NISA start? They actually started with our U.S. Attorney, Dave Capp's office, following the events of 9-11. Mm-hmm. And it was our critical infrastructure group, is what it was originally called. Okay. And it continued in that fashion uh, up until the floods of 2008 that I hit think, Northwest Indiana. I think all of our listeners are familiar with that. It, yes. It changed all our lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, after 2008, we realized that um, we had to do a better job working public, private sector, uh, coordinating our efforts. Mm-hmm. And Dave Cap at the time... Uh, actually sat down with Rich Douglas from U.S. Steel, and they decided to kind of meld the group into a more robust group that actually worked on projects and accomplished some stuff. Mm-hmm. And from that, NISA was born. I see. And so as uh, we talk about NISA, um, and so what is NISA doing? Well, NISA for, has been working on projects, again, since about 2009, mm-hmm. 2010, where actually U.S. Steel, um, when Rich Douglas was still with U.S. Steel, came up with an actual uh, strategic plan. Okay. Uh, Ray and I are basically implementing that plan. Wonderful. Yeah. And uh, what some of the things we're working on currently, we have now a shared resource inventory list which basically takes the assets that the private sector has, Mm -hmm. combines them with what the public sector has. And how that helps us, I'll give you a quick example, is uh, during the flooding in 2008, the town of Munster was in need of large pumps to help us move some water. This was prior to the levees giving way, and we couldn't find them anywhere. Uh, FEMA had prepositioned the pumps because of Hurricane Ike Uh uh, towards the coast. Uh, other municipalities who we normally call for help were using their pumps for their own communities. Unfortunately, the levees gave way and the rest is history. However, I still remember speaking with someone from BP Amico uh, shortly after the floodwaters had receded. They happened to live in Munster, and I said, I really could have used some pumps. And they said, well, why didn't you tell us we had a warehouse full? Wow. Wow. So right there, the light goes on. Mm-hmm. We don't know what we don't know. Absolutely. And now, with the, this is uh, combined with Purdue University, Barb Nikolai over at Purdue University, we came up with a wonderful uh, resource sharing list that now anybody who's vetted can go on the system and actually reserve that piece of equipment online. It gives them a person a contact, and they just make arrangements to pick that piece of equipment up. Wow, that, that's a huge accomplishment. It is. A huge accomplishment. So as you talk about the, the public sector, or who is on the public sector, talk a little bit about who's involved with the public sector group. Ray, why don't you take it? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, basically back in uh, 2003, uh, Indiana came up with a uh, district planning council okay. uh, initiative. And basically out of Indiana, there's 10 districts, us being District 1, which is uh, Lake County, Porter County, LaPorte, Newton, and Jasper. Um, From that point, it takes uh, uh, individuals from the Emergency Management Agency as well as other uh, public safety agencies Uh and also representation from the commissioners themselves as well as some of the larger cities or towns within those counties. A lot of people. I mean, there's literally probably close hundreds of people that are involved with this then. Right. And so then as you talk about the private sector, let's talk a little bit more about who's involved from the private sector aspects. 
Well, the private sector consists of everybody really along the shoreline, the south shoreline of Lake Michigan, all the way up to Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not uncommon at the meetings to have someone from ArcelorMittal there, U.S. Steel, Nice Source is a big uh, player in this and, and has really been uh, a force to make this group successful. Uh, along with uh, our water companies, uh, our aviation, uh, you name it. They're they're involved. And again, you know, uh, we've been associated with NISA now for over a year, and and we've seen the meetings, the impact of the variety of public and private sector working collectively. And, you know, I do congratulate both of you because you are the leaders of this, and I, I just think that the collaboration, you know, not only from a state level, not only from a local level, but from a federal level, is is wonderful and i you know to tell that story it's it's very difficult to, to really tell that story without experiencing the meetings and so again you know congratulations on leading let's call it leading the charge because we are an environmental uh group here but leading the charge for for northern indiana and well we uh were thankful for those kind words but really this group was the vision was really set up by Dave Capp's office and we do give most of the credit to him Mm -hmm. and and forward thinking corporations like uh, Nysource, Mm -hmm. Nipsco, um, you know US Steel, ArcelorMittal, they all see the intrinsic value in working together. Absolutely, absolutely. So I know that you've uh, just recently uh, formed a 501c3 Let's talk a little bit about your uh, board of directors and who they are. I'll let Ray take okay. that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, basically, to keep a fair representation of the group, mm-hmm. uh, we have two private sector uh, individuals, and uh, the currently Russ Shanelab from CSX uh, Railroad, as well as Frank Galvin from Motorola uh, Solutions. Um, representing the public sector side is Steve Shuckle and myself. Then we also, to keep everything on a, um, a balance, is the hospital, which also represents 16 hospitals throughout the five counties. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a representation at the table also. So it keeps an even balance that way. And, you know, again, I, I know things are moving progressively. And, um, you know, it's just, like I said, I, I, all the board of directors are at these meetings. And, you know, it's, it's very exciting to see this collaboration and some of the things that, uh, you know, are being uh, discussed. So let's talk a little bit more about the projects that you're working on and, and some of the things that uh, give our listeners a little more, you know, clarity of uh, NISA. And, you know, again, I, I think a lot of times, um, you know, we, we look at all the emergency response on different types of federal agencies, the state, you know, and w- why and how NISA is actually different. Well, we, um, our biggest project is currently we're working towards the construction of a multi-agency coordination center. Uh, the mayor of Gary, mm-hmm. uh, Mayor Karen Freeman Wilson, who, who gets the vision, has actually made available to us approximately 20 acres at Gary Airport. If we can execute our plan, we would love to build a multi-agency coordination center, which was a recommendation from our Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. The Coast Guard, as you know, handles disasters all over the world. And one of the things that they've used in other parts of the country was the multi-agency coordination center. So building on the recommendation from the Coast Guard, we're actually working towards construction of a building that will basically integrate our public-private sector. Wonderful. And it, let me give you an example of what we're talking about. If we go back to 2008, mm-hmm. again, during the flooding, if you remember our expressway, 8094, yes. mm-hmm. was closed for about 10 days. Mm-hmm. During that time, every municipality was basically working in their own silo you know that's correct yeah for example munster had a you know a command center set up and we were focused on munster and other communities as well were focused on their residents which they should be but our private sector at that same time we shut down that expressway u.s steel for example lost millions of dollars a day they couldn't get product in can get product out. Mm-hmm. That was their artery. And they had a very hard time trying to get hold of anybody to find out what alternate routes. 
you know, should we shelter our employees in place? You know, is there going to be a way to get them back sure. to work, et cetera? Now, and under a multi-agency coordination center, U.S. Steel, our next disaster, will have a seat at the table with INDOT mm -hmm. or the decision makers. They'll be able to sit down and map out an alternate route for their product. They're critical infrastructure. We have to keep them going. And we failed them in 2008. Now, all our corporations will have a seat at the table with the emergency responders who are making these decisions on what roads we're going to close. Uh, that's just a quick example. Wow, of but how that's this huge, works. Steve. I mean, I can't even under that. That undertaking is just huge, and that open communication is just tremendous. And uh, you know, there's such a need. And you know, just as you were uh, talking about the flood, I, I do remember that. I remember, you know, not through our um, company, but I remember through our, our church. You know, you know, trying to coordinate volunteers to help uh, Munster um, and, and, and some of the surrounding communities that you know needed assistance. And, and it was. And on that note, if you brought up a very good point. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention them. Probably the backbone of of a lot of what first responders do. Your churches. Mm -hmm. We have a COAD, which stands for us, uh, civilian organizations active in disasters. And under that umbrella, we have all the non for profit, mm -hmm. all the groups that assist emergency management in the field, such as your church. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe Larry was yes. stood mm -hmm. up from there. Yep. Uh, we have 211. We have uh, Ray, can you help me out with a few United more Way, there? Red Cross. Yeah. Um, a lot of the uh, Lutheran faith, uh, faith background uh, response groups, uh, Catholic. Uh, yeah, I mean, every, everybody, all, you know, yeah. everybody has, and, like you said, everybody is going to have a seat at this table and, and, and working together. And under when we build this multi-agency coordination center, they will have a desk there mm -hmm. and they will be engaged because they carry out such a, a critical mission as far as taking care of the, the affected sure. our victims. In a way that really government can't. No, well, it's very interesting. Um, so we're going to take a break right now. You're listening to the Green Radio Network here on AM 1420 WIMS Radio. I'm your host, Carl Lissick. We'll be right back with Chief Shekel and Ray Chambers of NISA right after this. There's nothing more important than spending time outdoors with your family. That's why it's so important to do whatever you can to keep our air clean. It's good for the environment and good for the health of your friends and family. Take a closer look at how pork quality is affecting our community. Across the three counties of Northwest Indiana, recent studies from the American Lung Association show that 9% of adults suffer from asthma, 4% live with chronic bronchitis, 38% have a form of cardiovascular disease, and 10% of the children in Lake and LaPorte counties struggle with pediatric asthma. Now, the number of adults with asthma is nearly that of adults with diabetes. Consider how diabetics make adjustments to their diet in order to be as healthy as possible. Everyone can make adjustments to improve air quality and the quality of life for those who live with asthma and other lung diseases. Northwest Indiana, clean air, think green, breathe easy. A message from NERPSI. Welcome back to the Green Radio Network here on AM 1420 WIMS Radio. I'm your host, Carl Lissick of South Shore Clean Cities, here to bring you the latest information on green projects and topics across the nation. Our guests today are, again, uh, Steve Sheckle and Ray Chambers with the Northwest Indiana Informational Sharing and Security Alliance, NISA. So, gentlemen, as we were talking a little bit about before, let's talk a little bit more about uh, some of the things that NISA is currently working on um, uh, currently. Okay. Yeah, uh, one of the things we worked on the past was creating a district comprehensive emergency management plan. We took all five counties' plans mm -hmm. and put them together so that we can uh, um, basically uh, expand on it for any type of emergencies that would cross the county lines and kind of uh, assisted with everybody that way. Um, the other ones that we've been working on is with the railway, uh, railroad companies. Sure. Uh, we have uh, uh, representatives from all the ra uh, railroad companies uh, throughout the nor uh, northwest indiana mm -hmm. uh, at the table and working on some plans and everything as well as the maritime uh, group uh, we have a lot of critical infrastructures we talked about before that are on the lake and this gives them an opportunity to work on their security systems that uh, they typically would be working in a silo effect sure this way they can uh, mm. cross those lines um, one of the things that is really becoming up and coming and a lot of concerns for individuals is cyber terrorism. Absolutely. And we do have a group working on that. 
and we have some very good, talented people working with that group. Uh, we also have, uh, with everything that's going on, expanding out on our media affairs um, so that we can make sure information is getting out accurately and uh, throughout the whole area so everybody is kept informed during any type of yeah. emergency. And again, I, I know just from attending the meetings, the open communication and the, the welcoming of uh, new potential people that have not been associated with NISA. And, you know, again, I, I know both of you are sponges. And, you know, again, I, I think that's really important in the future is just because as you're talking about technology, how quickly it's changing. And then, you know, as, as you make these plans for this facility, how are we incorporating all that that uh, technology into the future and you know as uh, you know first responders in law enforcement i just like well how do we stay up on all these things and uh, you know again i think you know this is going to play a role in, in the future of northwest indiana and so you know as we talk about some of the trainings and activities that you're doing uh, let's talk a little bit about that what what types of things are you you, you have uh, now going on with uh, training and well um let's go over some of the uh, past ones okay the, the district District 1, mm -hmm. tries to do a full-scale exercise every year. And it's quite an undertaking. It's not that you just show up one day and you decide to have an exercise. Every exercise, uh, by our standards, has to be HSEEP compliant, which is Homeland Security okay. uh, Exercise Evaluation Protocols. It's a mouthful, Steve. It is. <laughs> I'm very happy I remembered that acronym <laughs> off the top of my head. But that being said, it really requires about nine months to a year lead up to the actual exercise. So the planning is ongoing. So once we finish one exercise, basically we roll into another. Sure. Uh, last year, for example, the ports of Indiana are at all the NISA meetings. They're actual a, a big supporter of NISA. And we decided to have a uh, exercise at the Port of Indiana. We codenamed it Operation Safe Harbor, okay, which was basically a terrorist scenario. And uh, we brought together officers from the five counties who the districts, as far as I know, the only one trained up to basically uh, handle a seaburn event, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear explosive mm -hmm. seaburn is the acronym so the scenario was based around a uh, substance being offloaded a ship uh, security went to check it out at the port of indiana and received fire okay. from there um, they decided given the substance that they called the district in and the district which is made up of all the agencies. Mm -hmm. So every agency brings something to the table, to mm -hmm. the table, yep. a widget or a that. The Lake County Sheriff's Department, uh, we used their Marine unit and mm -hmm. their helicopter unit to basically uh, plan a, a response to this incident, which we did, and we practiced that. And it was very successful. I think it gave the Port of Indiana uh, some more things to look at. Sure. And and basically coordinate with us, and uh, those are the type of exercises we do. Uh, some of the other exercises in the past have been um, we staged at Gary Airport during the NATO exercise, and we did a lot of drills hmm. during the NATO exercise. Now it's nice, coincidentally, when you have a big event going on in Chicago that you might be called <laughs> for. It's sure nice to have it ongoing exercise that week 20 minutes from downtown Absolutely, Chicago if yeah. you needed and uh, that wasn't by accident we actually uh, planned for that in advance and we were able to have a lot of assets available if they were needed wow. thankfully Chicago Police Department and Chicago Emergency Management overall did a wonderful job with that event and uh, they handled it all but we're there for our neighbors to the north mm -hmm. And um, if they ever do need us, we'll be ready to supply that assistance. You know, again, as as we talk about this, I, I just you know I I learn something new every time I, I I listen to both of you speak. And I think uh, again, one of the things we don't get credit for in Northwest Indiana is our ability to work together. And I see that to be such a false statement. Is again, this is such a great example of bringing together all these different federal, state, and local agencies. And everybody working together, everybody, you know, having an opportunity to 
chime in and saying, you know, this, these are some of the things. And then, you know, sometimes not even knowing what the right question is to ask. And, you know, it just, I just see to uh, NISA to be really such a support system for all these different groups. So I'm, I'm really excited about the future. Yeah, one of the ones that we really just had, or our last one, was uh, um, utilizing a uh, an event with Mass Casualty in which the NICTI, which is South Shore yep. uh, train, had an accident uh, with a derailment with multiple victims. Um, then U.S. Steel had an incident because some of the chemicals were expounded into mm-hmm. their property. And we had Railcat Stadium also uh, available with individuals, so we had to evacuate that out. So we had to uh, encompass the whole downtown part of Gary um, with that, and we were able to come in and assist them with that exercise and uh, really put all the public and the private sectors and the quasi with the hospitals mm-hmm. and the group and everything else that way. Patients went to all those hospitals. Wow. So that was one of the uh, the largest ones, and that's what we're, we're trying to do mm-hmm. is to keep that going because those are the groups that are going to work together in the real world. And Carl, it's amazing. True, truly, is amazing when we start batting around a, a problem with the brain power in that room mm-hmm. and the experience in that room. It's amazing to see how quickly they can come together, working with the public sector, and solve that problem. Sure. And uh, I don't see that anywhere else. I've been doing this job 28 years now. I haven't seen that kind of cooperation where everybody just sits in a room. You know, we do truly have some of the brightest minds in that room. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ray and I excluded, of course. No, that's not <laughs> but, true. Uh, yeah, it's not true. Uh, but to see them uh, just take a problem and, uh, you know, dissect it, and then everybody has their little area of expertise Absolutely. or a little something they can add to solve that problem. Mm-hmm. And that's really one of the magical things about NISA. Mm-hmm. So as you do, as we talk about some of the future plans for NISA, let's talk a little about that. Okay. Um, and it is really nice to sit there and get the recognition from not only the state level, but mm-hmm. also the federal level. Uh, last year we had a class in which uh, um, the Naval Academy uh, program that comes out to different locations offered a uh, facilitated workshop for uh, utility um, snowstorm type mm-hmm. of deal. And it was very realistic. They had um, actual news broadcasts going out, and we had to react as a group, and we had representation, again, for public and private sectors from the five counties. Um, this year, we've just been approached by FEMA that they have another uh, utility grid exercise coming up, and they asked if we would be willing to host that. Wow. And uh, that's going to be in November, and again, that's going to bring in all of our utility companies, not only NISORS, but we have the little REMC companies sure. as well as the KV Electric or KV REMC, which is a lot bigger uh, uh, of the group, um, to bring them in as well as the water, Indiana Water, mm-hmm. and different ones like that to bring those groups in here and work on that and have that type of uh, group that way. So let's get a crystal ball out. What will NISA look like in five years? Best <laughs> best case scenario. And I know that puts you on the spot, but I. I think, you know, with with some of the progression, some of the discussions that have already occurred, some of the things that you've accomplished, that this has accomplished already, I I think that, um, you know, this is a a need for our area. Well, let me lay out my vision. Okay. And my vision really is just a compilation of many individuals' visions that all bring something to Mm -hmm. it. I think in five years, Carl, you're going to see a shift uh, in the way we do business in Northwest Indiana Mm -hmm. because of NISA. You know, obviously the big picture, the vision was Dave Capps. But again, the collective brain power in a meeting is phenomenal. We started talking about a multi-agency coordination center. Mm -hmm. We gave examples on the show of how that will help our response to things. In that same meeting, it came up, uh, Dave Colson from the ATF, who I've had a distinct honor of knowing my entire career. And ATF it, stands for? Alcohol, Tobacco, and okay. Firearms. Just a phenomenal man. Came up with a vision. Well, if you're going to have this multi-agency coordination center, why don't we have a 24-7 crime center like mm-hmm. they do in Chicago, where we can track all our gang and gang movements, where we can coordinate all our intel in one spot, 
where we'll be able to work on products for individual police departments. Right now, for example, the town of Munster, I have to pay for it. Basically, a computer analyst, forensic analyst, to handle all our computer needs in house. Wow. That's 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 the way we're progressing. That's a big expense for a little department to bear, mm-hmm. but it's ne- a necessity right now. With the future of NISA, we can actually pool these individuals and not bear the cost that we're bearing right now and get a high quality product and have people from Chicago hopefully in that center. I see. And have people from Indianapolis in that center. And we send our people over there and then you have a complete uh, inner working and network of people that are sharing information on a timely basis. That's just one thing that just Mm -hmm. came. Hey, if we build this building, we we can also give this to our area. Um, You're going to see customs. I think Gary Airport will flourish if we build the customs Mm -hmm. within the NISA building. Um, Going forward, how about a time in the not-so-distant future where we actually have people with eyes on uh, within that monitoring our highways, with our pipeline group monitoring our pipelines, our rail lines, all from one center, we, with the emergency responders that are going to have to respond to that emergency. You know, that's my vision of what NISA will be in five years. Wow, and that's amazing. How about you, Ray? And I think that's uh, real accurate on that. Um, as we started out in the, after 9-11, there was a lot of grant funding that was available mm-hmm. to the communities in that. Uh, we were very fortunate to see that things were going to start cutting back. And instead of buying an item for everybody, we bought one big item to mm-hmm. actually work. Um, and I think that's what you're really going to start seeing is, is uh, with the budget cuts backs and everything else, public and private sectors, that this is a way for us to best utilize resources and manpower by having a generated center um, that can coordinate and expound on to all that uh, uh, the groups that are out there and be able to sit there and uh, expand in the future down the line and keep this thing going for years to come. You know, it's, it's very exciting, and obviously I, I think uh, our listening audience would agree that this is definitely a needed thing as we hear daily now. It's not even weekly, monthly. It's daily, almost hourly. We're hearing about some type of situation, let's call it, throughout the world. And, uh, again, you know, preparing our area for that is just, uh, you know, something that uh, it's comforting for me as a citizen. And, and, you know, seeing folks like both of you and, and the people that are involved in this is just so reassuring. So I just had one off-the-cuff question. How, do you, how did you two meet? District Planning Council. <laughs> yeah, dist- yeah but- um, District 1 prior to mm-hmm. NISA being formed uh, or prior to us really uh, becoming involved in this, um, we had worked together as a district, and um, and actually unknowingly, Steve took an EMT class that I helped teach. Okay, and he needed a lot of help. Or <laughs> going, well, we don't like to divulge your age here, but it was yeah. thirty some years ago. And uh, so after talking and had a lot in common, he's from down south and working up north, and I was originally from Hammond, and I'm living down south mm-hmm. now, and it just yeah. And, and again, you can just tell the, the friendship that you guys have, professional and, and private. And again, we just want to thank you for all that. So, you know, one, one of the things as a um, as a citizen, what, what would you suggest to a, a normal citizen? Uh, and you know, uh, how should we be reacting to things that are going on in the world with our law enforcement and our first responders? I mean, as a, as a police officer. How should we approach a police officer? I mean, there's so many people that have gratitude for our first responders and our, our police officers, and, and sometimes they just don't know how to express their thank, thankfulness for that. I will say in the last six weeks, mm-hmm. especially after the Dallas shooting, uh, from a law enforcement perspective, I have never seen more outpouring of support from our citizens. And I can tell our listeners how important that is Mm-hmm. Just for an individual person to go up and thank an officer for what they're doing, um, thank them for being out there. You might not get the response you think you might get mm-hmm. from an officer. They might just graciously say thank you, but trust me, when they get back to the station or when they're at home speaking with their spouse, it really means something. 
and it, it's everybody wants to know they matter. They do matter, and, absolutely. And police are no different. You know, they want to know that they're they're taking a job that's dangerous inherently, just by its mm-hmm. nature, and uh, that people truly still appreciate what they're doing out absolutely. there. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, any closing thoughts as we wind up our show here, gentlemen? I've been a police officer for 28 years now. I can tell you that although we face a lot of challenges, I've never been more energized or excited to be working with a group of professionals as we have with NISA. truly is a, a transformational time in our area and, uh, and an exciting one at that. And I'm very proud to serve with these other men and women that make up NISA. And I truly believe that they have the right vision and they are transforming the way we deliver our emergency services going forward. And I'm just happy to be a part of that. And we're so proud uh, to have you both uh, being uh, le- leading this charge for change in our area. And, and we're excited about the future of NISA. And we hope to have you back soon to talk about about what's going on in our area. And that will do it for today's edition of the Green Radio Network. I'm your host, Carl Lissick. Thanks again to our guests, Chief Sheckle and Ray Chambers of NISA. And be sure to join us again on the upcoming WIMS Radio and Gerard Media for the next edition of the Green Radio Network. And please visit online at southshorecleancities.org. And please remember, it's never too late to begin your environmental legacy. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.